part 10 of the 101 class, the beginners class, where we're just going to do some review. So we've built two dynamic forms over the last uh, two weeks in these classes. And I wanted to just go back and review some of the things we've learned so as to prepare you now for the next class if you want to continue on the intermediate level 201. Uh, we've talked about static forms and dynamic forms and how to create dynamic content from static content. We've talked about using naming conventions and what I mean by that is the lowercase txt and then the uppercase c client. And we're doing that to identify what these things are in our hierarchy because later when we come back in our inter intermediate class and do uh, some scripting you know, our, our forms get bigger and much more complicated. It gets very difficult if you don't rename all these objects and use some kind of naming convention. If you just use the the names that that lifecycle gives you like drop down list one or text field one or text field two, text field three, and you keep keep doing this, it gets very confusing on what what the object actually functions as. If you name it something intuitive, it's helpful later on. We've talked about the difference between positioned and flowed subforms and main forms. So like this design page is set to flowed Western text, meaning it will flow left to right and then down the page, which is why if I make this field here just a little bit bigger, there's not enough room for this field to live to the right of it, so it, it goes down the page then. But if I shrink this a little bit, like that, it's big enough to fit now, and it can sit here to the right. And as this field grows, like this address here, which is set to allow multiple lines and height to grow, as you type, this will get bigger and bigger and bigger down the page and push things down with it. That's flowed content. But then sometimes we want positioned content, meaning we don't want this, this sincerely or this signature field to grow at all. We don't want it to move at all uh, relative to the other two objects in this footer subform. So the footer subform is set to positioned, meaning we want all the objects inside this subform to use the XY coordinates. They all have XY coordinates. But if we go to this object, there is no XY because it's in the flowed part of the subform. We talked about the hierarchy and how we have parents and children. So form one is the, the topmost parent over all other things in the hierarchy. And then we have things like main, and main is a parent to txt client, and sf footer. And sf footer is a parent to txt signature and title. And I know that doesn't make a lot of sense right now, or doesn't seem to have a lot of utility. But when we come back and do scripting, and we do relative and absolute object references in our script. We'll have to know the relationships between these objects. We talked about master pages and how the content area of the master page is where the design page objects are allowed to live. It's the real estate marked off for our design objects. And if we don't allow the content area to go anywhere else, those things can't live there. But if our content area is is overlapping things on our master page, then we'll see a superimposed, like, like in this example I'm giving you now. Master pages are like a template. They're like a, um, a starting point for a page where you can put header and footer objects like logos and addresses and form titles and page one of one, page one of two, x of x of y. We've talked about how all these things put together make dynamic PDFs that can then flow page by page. We've talked about tables and how tables can grow. The, the rows can be set to grow dynamically by repeating row for each data item and allowing them to repeat. And we've done a little bit of minor scripting, one and two line scripts, where we use the instance manager to add instance or remove instance, depending on which rows we were in. We've talked a little bit about form calc and doing summation calculations and subtotal calculations. Very rudimentary basic stuff. Uh, in, the, in the 201 class, 
when we start talking about intermediate topics, these scripts are going to get a little bit longer and a little bit more interesting. So let's talk about that real quick. In the next video series, I'm going to show you how to use uh, dynamic effects like hide and show and check boxes and radio buttons to make things move around at runtime for the end user. It's almost like taking the form now and creating an app out of it, an app that runs in an Adobe Acrobat PDF. We're going to talk about uh, drop downs, email submit buttons, reader extensions, input masks, global data binding, uh, the JavaScript editor, we're going to go more detail there, and we're going to talk about using reader extensions so that you can save and view your forms or your end users can save and view the forms in Acrobat Reader. So I hope you'll continue on and, and um, uh, come to the intermediate class. I plan to, to put that out very soon and I hope that uh, you've learned a lot in this class please ask questions in the comments. Uh, I can only answer questions if they're actually asked in the comment section. So please ask questions and please subscribe so that you can get updates on when new videos come out. I thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and I hope that uh, you have fun and success creating your dynamic PDFs. We'll see you next time.